Sean Franklin and Nicole Smith from Blood and Iron Martial Arts. Here today to show you a good cyclical drill for a single-handed weapon. This is a drill we call high-low. It's a common hanging parry drill which has applications to a wide range of single-handed weapons. Let's break it down a little so you can see what's going on. This drill begins with one fighter in the high guard, the other in the low guard. Now depending on what weapon you're using or what system you're following, there will be some differences, but the core mechanics remain largely the same. The person in high guard is going to cut toward the person in low guard's head. The person in low guard is going to come up and parry. The person in high guard is going to continue their attack. The person in low guard is going to come around back into their high guard. Now you see we're in a mirror image of where we've started. This drill really has two positions. One is the high and the low. The other is the parry and the attack. Pretty simple to see how it all chains together. There are two footwork patterns that go with this drill. In the first, you keep your weapon leg forward the entire time. This is the quickest way to do it. However, your guard position isn't nearly as strong. It does allow for a rather quick counterattack, but like Sean said, it's not as powerful and it does keep you relatively close to your opponent. Also, having your feet in this position makes your attacks very linear. Passing back creates more distance between you and your opponent. It's also a much stronger position to be in. Now, the more distance can be good or bad depending on the circumstance. However, this does allow me to circle around when I attack, not restricting myself to linear motions. Slower though. An important thing to remember when doing these drills is your footwork. Now, we don't want you weighted on your heels when you're doing this your entire foot does touch the ground, with the majority of the weight being on the balls of your feet. Secondly, hopping. Don't hop. You want the drill to be dynamic, but grounded. Three, the teeter-totter. Rocking back and forth, not getting much done. If you train to not move your feet in a drill, when you fight, you will not move your feet. Make sure when you're doing this, you don't let it get sloppy. Better to not train than to train bad habits. This is a great drill. It works with a large variety of weapons and systems. For beginners, it's a good way to get the fundamental movements down. And if you ramp up the intensity a little bit for intermediate and advanced students, it's a great sword-specific conditioning drill. Done well, it can help you improve parries, attacks, and your footwork. Done improperly, and really all you've managed to do is work up a sweat and perhaps reinforce some bad habits. Practicing the same strike 10,000 times wrong doesn't really help you. So even if your shoulder starts to burn, remember to keep the form together. And remember, if you're not going to put in the work, you're not going to get the results.